fit. Um, don't say anything about my jacket. That's not, that's not kind. It looks perfect. Thanks, thanks. No problem there. <laughs> I wrote that into the script. Uh, like most people, uh, you've probably had that situation far too many times. But this next invention might just help. Absolutely. It's a kind of smart mannequin. It uses robotic technology to actually physically change size. You can see it here whilst we're talking. It's based on the measurements entered in by the designer or the person who's making the patterns. The company behind the innovation, Uvica, produced around 100 of these mannequins this year in Europe. It's targeting both high-end luxury fashion houses as well as ready-to-wear brands, as well as the military and other public sector organisations. Well, we have the founder of the French startup, Uvica, with us in the studio, Audrey Laurie Bagenthal. Nice to meet you. Nice Thanks to meet for you. coming in. Thank you very uh, much. So we were looking at that mannequin, and you were showing me a video earlier. It, it actually just moves depending on the measurements that are inputted. Extraordinary. And this was your idea. You were studying to be a lawyer. What happened? What happened, I listened too closely to my mum, she's beautiful, she looks like the French actress Catherine Deneuve, and she complained that she could not find garments that would fit her well. I found it unfair and I checked how garments were made and I realised they were made on this wood mannequin that is so archaic and so unrealistic that I decided to make it evolutive. I thought it was easy, but then the magic of the body is so complex that it took years to make that robot. We have seven years of R&D. Can I just ask you how you went from being someone who was studying law to creating this extraordinary robot? I mean, you're moving from law to engineering, surely. I mean, how did you do that? Um, I was bold and young and unconscious, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> bold and young and unconscious. <laughs> yes, that's the, <laughs> that's the key to success. Yeah. Yes, maybe, <laughs> not to know what's going to happen next. Uh, and uh, I decided to drop off my study and went uh, to study fashion and pattern making. I, wear, I worked for five years to know uh, my future users' taste and uh, habits and to know them from the inside. And then I moved uh, to robotics and I learned how to speak with engineers and to um, merge into a male-dominated world, but it went well, so we achieved quite a success. I was just thinking, um, though, with this, if you're putting specific um, uh, measurements and sizes in for someone who wants to buy an item and the mannequin's changing so it reflects their size, wouldn't it be easy if they just came in and were fitted out for it themselves? Um, it's not a B2C uh, solution, it's a B2B uh, technology. It's an industrial equipment for fashion brands uh, and haute couture and make to measure brands. And uh, when the customer has not, uh, you don't need the customer to be there because it, normally when you make garments, you need the person to come two or three times. Mm. And uh, this is quite uh, difficult to have them. And then it's also for the ready-to-wear because they have sizes, but each brand has its own way to size their garments. And uh, they need to try every time on the mannequin. And if they have uh, an evolutive uh, mannequin, they will be able to test every size or they will be able to target their customer more directly. They will be able to take that shift in which I really do believe in. It's a mass customization revolution. Now, you have gone from, you know, creating this robot to providing many, many mannequins to high-end haute couture fashion, but also the military, the healthcare services. As a business, you're very well spread, you're very diverse, which is great. But also you've had requests from people to come up with a robot for the face, for the feet, for other parts of the body. Talk us through that. Yeah, we were so amazed because at first I really thought it would be only for fashion, but then it came that for sport, medical and military sector, morphology was even more crucial because you, you make garments that have um, uh, um, a function that will maybe cure or protect. Uh, for instance, in the military sector, a uh, life uh, anti bullet jacket are not so well done for a woman with breast, and for the moment they have male jacket, which is really a problem. And then there are other sectors that came, and that was really a surprise. It was uh, during the CES, uh, where we won an award recently in January. And uh, they came for the cosmetic because face are changing through the age. So a robot that will will have a face that's changing and moving to it to to show emotions. Yes, and uh, the aging process. And uh, they are also like for the body, a uh, different way that the body evolves according to the diversity of morphology, according to where you're from. 
and uh, also for glasses they have a real problem and uh, and food all, uh, but you can't make these robots quick enough can you um, we will. We are organizing our growth. <laughs> what? We need to handle the growth. It's a lot of work, but it's okay. We'll do everything. We want to grow big and fast. It's, it's interesting. But given, given what you do, what, what do you think the next um, step will be? What's the, the natural next phase? So the natural uh, next uh, move are that we are first dealing with fashion, medical and sports brand and military with, uh, with uh, a robot that is conceived for garments industry. And uh, we are um, widening um, our uh, uh, target to Europe and now to the United States. We're opening a branch in New York in January 2019 and to in Shanghai where we have a, lot, a huge market as well in September 2019 too. It's, uh, it's very intense. All right, Audrey, we're going to wash this face. It's uh, been so lovely to meet you. Thanks for coming thank in. Thank you so much for the honor. <laughs> nice to see you. Nice.